Well, good afternoon to everybody. Um, I wanted to to start um, by sending a, a warm um, salute from our president. Uh, Presidente Moreno couldn't be here. He's preparing our annual meeting. Uh, so he uh, invited us, the technical team, to chair uh, today. Uh, the good thing is that um, he brought with us a lot of experience in the region that we hope we will inspire some of the solutions to the difficult questions that have been posed by by uh, Dr. Touré. I want to thank the government of Ireland, the HICEL, and the Broadband Commission for inviting us today and for its warm welcome. But I wanted to extend also that thank you to the city of Dublin and the Dubliners who have been absolutely fantastic in welcoming us. We invited today uh, Professor Michael Cave, who has been working actively in the last months, and I think uh, does not need an introduction, to help us uh, structure uh, the discussion and help us to put a good document after a fruitful discussion. I wanted also to thank the members of the Commission group, uh, Working Group that uh, sent us very, very useful comments and ideas that have been critical to set the course of the discussion that we're going to have today. As you have in our paper in front of you, we structure an ag agenda that um, it's a structure in the way that we wanted to make this a very active dialogue. Uh, we wanted to be an opportunity to bring ideas and to have a fruitful discussion. So in order to do so, what we did was uh, to um, think about opening a uh, presentation to warm us all up, and that will be done by Martin Keeve, and I think that could set some ideas for the dialogue, and I think it's a very motivating uh, point of departure for the discussion. And we don't want to expect after a long set of presentations to have your reaction. So what we think is immediately after he does the presentation, if we can make a short a round of reactions to his presentation and his paper will be ideal. And that will be followed by some uh, three presentations uh, that um, have been brought to us today that I think bring very interesting ideas that we have to consider. One by Alcatel Lucent, uh, another by Intel, and the other by Recipco. And after that, we will have an open discussion. I will pass the floor to, to Martin Cave to help us to direct the discussion to make sure that he squeezes out of all the members of um, this group all the ideas for the benefit of the final document that we start to, to develop as we go along. And finally, I would like to close with uh, some agreements on the basic direction and contents of the document, uh, setting the next step, uh, steps, and more important, with a very clear timetable to make sure that we do a good job and we do it uh, on time. Uh, one thing, as you might see, I skipped the coffee break, and it, that was intentional, uh, not to um, deprive you from the coffee. Uh, but actually, we thought that the dialogue could flow as we go, and we're trying to see how it goes if we stay here and we discuss uh, the coffee's open or for us outside, I understand. So uh, if somebody sees that, uh, or you see that everybody is sleeping, we will make sure that we change the plans, but we hope that that will not be the case. Um, so taking on, on where uh, Dr. Touré uh, left his uh, introductory remarks, I think it's clear that the financial and investment uh, needs um, are huge. The numbers go runs in the trillions. Uh, numbers come from 30 trillion, 50 trillion, and we don't know even what that enta entails. I think when you see that, it seems almost impossible uh, to achieve. And I think part of the task of this commission is to set the path that this is possible and could be financed. But one thing that is clear is that we require the action of the public sector and the private sector. And that brings me to one idea that I wanted to propose uh, today. And is what is the purpose of this document? Who is the audience for this document? Is what is what we want? And we thought, why don't think about these ideas under the questions of, uh, of uh, Dr. Touré, that the document creates a path for dialogue and action between the public and the private sector. And usually, we can do a document that is academic and very, very solid. We can do one that all this audience is like preaching to the choir. But they are actors that require a need and want a clear discussion for the future. I think that remains in the public sector. My experience working in Latin America and the Caribbean, and I want to overextend that, shows that 
We have excellent dialogue with the telecommunication ministers, but we, the ones that we wanted to bring to the table is the policymakers, and particularly the Ministry of Finance. Those are the ones that take the decisions on finance. So if we make this document a very solid document on the issues that we want to raise, but in a way that is a live document that we could discuss with them in search for common action, I think will be a success. So we know that the financial needs are huge, and we know that the private sector will provide the majority of the such finance, but it needs a framework and a regulatory environment that allow uh, the private sector to do so. So how we can attract the attention of the public actors, the policymakers, and I think despite the fact that this huge number on how much we need on the public, uh, on, on, on the finance uh, and investment, I think one thing that we have to underline is what is the cost of not doing it? Which I think present the case not only about the huge and almost unsurmountable task of getting $50 trillion, but also that there's no option that for the governments and policymakers in their own countries, there's no way to avoid the cost of not financing this. And on this, I wanted to bring something that comes in the context of the Millennium Development Goals too is that the digital divide nowadays is also the social divide. And I think in a connected and global society, the digital divide actually enlarges the social divide. So this is an urgency of the matter for policymakers and society to attend to this matter. We cannot overlook it. I think um, Dr. Touré pointed out that this is not about commerce or economic transaction. This is very much the tool for social interaction and the interaction on the, between the government and its citizens. So it is very, very important to attend to this matter, not because of how much we need to raise, but the cost that we will pay if we don't. On this, I think it's very important from the point of inclusion, talk about that socio-demographics do matter. Financial solutions will change depending where you're going to or who you're going to reach and how the population is deployed. And on that very short, I wanted uh, to talk about not only that we should talk about not only how to finance supply, but also how to make sure that we have finance for demand, that we have an effective demand. And I mentioned with that not only access, but also adoption and use. And I think today we're going to have a very, very interesting discussion on things that are being done, which are extremely innovative. So again, Thinking about, I wanted to propose that we address the questions that, um, that mm, mm, Dr. Ture put to the table. And we think about those uh, in how to present public intervention tools with high productivity, hopefully low cost, and possible implementation so we can present some sort of a path or menu for very, very different countries to start a very productive dialogue uh, and with a very clear presentation of facts and options so the path for action is, is, is clear. So I invite, apart from the very technical discussions that in the final report we're very aware of the audience, if we want to make this not an excellent document, but a live document that actually we can bring with us, and uh, with us meaning you, and I mean the development banks like the one that I work with, in which you can go to and present something that instead of being these panic number that will paralyze everybody is there's a way of moving ahead and there are some excellent ideas. Because we have to know that there's not going to be one solution, even best practices are only illustrative of things that could happen. We have to fit n into national strategies, so one solution does not fit all. And we, but we have the opportunity to influence those national strategies and provide solutions that fit in them. So again, I think we have the opportunity to identify direct actions for public sector intervention, joint actions for public and private um, interventions, private sector innovation, and also an opportunity to see how we can tap and tap resources. A final point that I wanted to do is that in my long experience working with um, developing countries and bridging public and private sector, one thing that is not only what to do, but how to do it. The road to success is exactly that, a road. And if we don't think about how you go about those steps, my experience is that change takes place extremely 
slowly and al almost always in a very ineffective way. So I encourage us to think about, at some point, institutional arrangements for change. It's not only that the institutions are solid, are good, the regulation is good. If we want to have change, we have to think what is the institutional arrangement to make that change happen. How to put all the actors together and who's going to take care that that happens. I think we can do that. The contribution to the discussion and the, and the progress ahead will be huge. So with that, I thank you very much again for the honor of, to the IDB to, to chair this, this group. And let's uh, put ourselves to work. And with that, um, I would like to pass the floor to Martin Cave.